Hey guys, so I'm still in Montreal and I thought I'd show you around the city or like this suburb where I am, it's called Little Italy and it's pretty cool if you have a look you can see all these um, ladders and they just go up into the building so there's always like at least two entrances into the main part of the building and also the upstairs, it's, it's kind of weird and then they're still connected and these are all pretty tall buildings as well so nice little neighborhood, I, I really like it here there you can see another one over there so yeah um yeah <laughs> and then but now back to forex so what i wanted to talk today about was a follow-up video on uh, the previous one about buying and selling that you should um like forex is different to the stock market and if you're only buying or only selling you should consider that you have that other option as well um so and today i wanted to kind of elaborate on that as well that forex um when you buy and sell a lot of the time traders make uh, I would say an incorrect assumption that buy and sell triggers should be symmetrical uh, it's a very interesting concept and it's actually you can see it in a lot of strategies and like predominantly it's all around the place that um, buy and sell entries are symmetrical what I mean is for example if you're using the RSI indicator for for a filter or maybe even for a signal you might hear something like if the RSI um, crosses the 70 uh, level then you know the market is over overbought right so then you should expect it uh, to maybe turn around or if the RSI crosses the 30 level downwards then the market is almost oversold or something like that and um, as you can see those levels are symmetrical so 70 and 30 because uh, 30 is 100 minus 70 or 70 is 100 minus 30 and uh, that is not always the best idea in fact most of the time it's not the best idea and from my from my experience from my point of view and like even from a statistical point of view why should your buy entry be symmetrical to your sell entry like why do you expect that your currency pair will exhibit the same type of or symmetrical type of movements when it's going up and when it's going down um, maybe maybe the best entry for a sell will be at a 20 level for the RSI and a, the best entry for a buy will be at a 70 or 65 so uh, a lot of the time traders optimize parameters if like we're talking about algorithmic trading systems or if uh, we're talking about just uh, manual trading still traders try to look for parameters that are symmetrical so 70 30 80 20 just for the RSI or let's say when you're using the moving average right you might be using one move like always traders try to look for um, symmetrical entries even for the moving averages for instance when the price crosses the five period or ten period moving average upwards when it crosses downwards how about maybe there's a different moving average that you should be looking at uh, for different types of signals so it's not always the case sometimes you might want to use the same moving average or same indicator for your buy and sell but in cases where you have that flexibility to adjust parameters it can be a good idea to explore whether or not a non-symmetrical signal will be more beneficial because that way you are uh, le limiting your uh, options less like again you can fall into the trap of choice paralysis but you know, as long as you can restrict yourself from doing that you have more choices and um, in a symmetrical situation you are more likely to find uh, suboptimal parameters in a non-symmetrical situation you can buy the, find the most optimal ones for buys and the uh, most optimal ones for sells so check that out have, have a think about that how can that apply to your trading strategy and I'll see you next time until then happy trading